the day I almost got kidnapped. I have seen a lot of your stories that creeped me out and thought it was time to share mine. This happened when I was about 11. I was hanging out with a friend and she had to go home, so I walked back with her. It was the middle of the day. I live in a small town so it's never crowded or busy. No one in sight, except that guy in his car from across the street. He was parked in a parking lot so I thought he was waiting for someone. My friend left and I started walking home. Instantly, he started to follow me. I was almost sure this was not a coincidence. I crossed the street. He kept going in my direction. Still, no one in sight and I started being scared. He was driving very slowly. Too slowly for it to be normal. To test if he was actually following me, I stopped and pretended I had to check my shoes. He stopped as well. I was terrified. Luckily, I knew the city perfectly. I was born here. I knew that the next right turn is a way he can't take with a car. I immediately turned there and he just rushed to the next road where he could turn right. As soon as I saw him turn on the next road, I went back on my steps and just ran as fast as I could until I reached my home. Only a couple minutes later, I realized I could have so easily been kidnapped there, with no witnesses at all. To the weird man in his car. Let's not meet. Wake up. Alright, so I'm new to this sub. Just found out about it today, actually. And I've decided to share an experience of mine. So, some background information. I'm male, 24, from Pretoria, South Africa. This occurred about eight-ish years ago. So the area that I live in is generally okay, but it's had its fair share of crime, creeps, and the general other stuff. My house is one house away from this really large park really lackluster, only a tall slide and a pair of swings, the rest is open field. So I was walking to the local spa, and in order to get there, I had to cross said park. Now I was used to seeing shoes and other things lying randomly around, but this time was different. I found three whole pairs of clothes just lying there. Looked like Cell had gone through the place. This kind of rattled me, being 15 at the time. I had decided to hurry past this area, as I was getting bad vibes from it, when I felt someone grab my arm. Shocked, I whipped around to face a man, really tall, staring me right in the face with this angry expression. I wasn't really intimidated, as I'm quite heftily built, but given the circumstances, my heart did start beating a little quicker. This guy starts ranting on to me about a whole bunch of nonsense, and trying not to piss him off, I just agree to everything he says. I can remember the smell of drunk on his breath. One sentence that stood out was about how he was Moses reincarnate and I should play with myself tonight. Okay, I thought, this is starting to get creepy. 
I decided I'd had enough and thanked the man for the advice before turning to walk away, not running because I didn't want to trigger whatever predatory instinct this man had. So I'm about 50 meters away from him when he starts running towards me, tackling me down, starts screaming in my ear, wake up, wake up. Scratching my arm with these long nails I'd failed to notice and attempted to bite my throat before breaking down in tears about how I killed him. I'm practically dying of fear in the overall oddity of the situation when some people see what's going on and rush over to get the man off me. He doesn't even put up a fight just lies there crying until the police came to pick him up. Not sure what happened to him, or why those clothes were there, or what could have happened to me, but all I'm saying is, let's not meet again, sir. Are you disabled? So I was walking home from school one day when I heard a voice say, Hey, you want a job? I turned and saw a slightly shabby looking man in his mid 40s, about seven feet to my right, in front of what I assumed to be a vacant home. Now, given that I wasn't an absolute idiot, I was very suspicious. I knew I wouldn't get any closer to the man, but I was a bit curious about what he was going to say, for whatever reason. In a moment of pure inquisitive genius, I nervously asked, Huh? To which he again stated that he was willing to pay me to help him with something. I stared at him, probably looking confused and mildly unnerved. He then said, I just need you to move some dirt to this warehouse. Now it was at this point I realized I really needed to get away from this person as I am 5 foot 3 and would probably not win a fight with this guy. I then said in another moment of pure genius, I can't work, I'm 14. To which he responded, Are you disabled? Which quite frankly really caught me off guard. No, I said then you can help me with this dirt. He was starting to get mad, so I just said, I have to get home, and walked way faster than usual to my house, constantly looking behind me. So, creepy guy who wanted me to carry dirt to a warehouse hidden from public view, Let's not meet again. Edit. It just occurred to me that I should mention that this area was well within walking distance of an elementary, middle, and the small charter high school I attended that he may not have known about. The creep probably thought I was a middle schooler. Edit 2. For any people looking at the comments, there was originally a bit in the story where I talked about how the fact that I was not conventionally attractive made me think he wouldn't sexually assault me. Many people voiced disagreement with this notion, and I eventually decided after way too long to take that out, as to further the idea that only conventionally attractive people get raped was something that I deeply regret and did absolutely not intend to do.
Can you help me find my puppy? My boyfriend and I love listening to scary stories on YouTube. We talk about how creepy the stories are and what it would be like if something like that happened to us. One day while we are cleaning the house and listening to YouTube, there was a story about a little kid that was followed by some man in a van. After the story finishes, he casually mentions, Some guy tried to get me into a van once. Uh, what? I laugh. He must be joking. No, really. When I was little. Oh my god. What? You're lying. Tell me. He starts off, Yeah, when I was little, you know how I loved riding my bike. I had my white bike, and my hair was still blonde, so I must have been about seven. That summer was the first time my mom would let me ride on the street to ride around the block. I was just allowed down to the end of the street. I was riding my bike, and when I got down to the end of the road, a guy with an actual pedo stash in a van stops in the road. He was headed in the opposite direction, so the driver door was closest to me. He sort of leans out the window and calls out to me. Hey kid, have you seen my puppy? I told him no. So he asks, Can you come help me look for him? All I remember is not caring about this guy's dog because my dog was safe at home. I gave the guy my best tough face and pedaled like I'm trying to win the Tour de France all the way home. Once I was inside, I looked out the window and saw the van slowly driving by. What did your mom say? I didn't tell her. What? Are you crazy? Yeah, I didn't want to go back to riding my bike around the pool in the backyard. Were you afraid? Not really. We had an assembly so I knew what to do. He is completely unfazed by this incident. He thinks his seven-year-old self was a funny pseudo-badass. I can't imagine if this happened to me. I would have probably been taken because I will literally do anything if a dog is involved. And to the creepy stash van man, can't you come up with a new line? Edit. I was reminded of this story tonight and decided to post it. But now my boyfriend and I are trying to figure out if the guy was caught, or if other boys went missing in the area at the time. He lived right outside of Philadelphia, in Burlington County, New Jersey. He is 24 now, so this happened in the early 2000s. So if Reddit wants to play detective, I would love to see that. Phone calls from a breather. About 15 years ago, I worked as a part-time receptionist at a car dealership. I worked Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 5 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It was a pretty sweet gig, actually. My mom worked in the back office and was pretty well universally liked, so I was cool by association. I was in school at the time, so I had ample time to do homework or do other hobbies 
because I was only expected to answer the phones, give out basic information, and route calls as needed. A few times, I had to deal with people who were angry that we advertised Hablamos Español because we had a Spanish-speaking saleswoman. I was even in one of their commercials once as a customer because the actor didn't show up. About six months or so into the job, I started getting a call every Saturday morning between 9 and 10 a.m. The first time, I picked up the phone, delivered my greeting, and then, nothing, just breathing. Hello? Breathing. Do you need help? Breathing. If you need help, press a button twice. Breathing. I'm going to hang up now. Breathing. I hung up. They didn't call back. The next Saturday, same thing. And the one after that, and after that. I told my mom about it, and she said it was probably just one of the sales guys playing a prank. Car salesmen are a breed unto themselves, and I wouldn't have put it past them, but I didn't think this was the case. This went on for the rest of my employment there, about a year or so more. Sometimes, I wouldn't get a call at all, and wonder why. Sometimes it came later in the day. It was always just breathing, no background sounds, no speaking, no button presses. I began referring to the person calling as the breather. I don't recall ever feeling watched or followed. The general manager had one of the sales guys escort me to my car at the end of the shift anyway. At one point, my then fiance worked in the service drive and he escorted me. It was never reported to the police or anything, and as far as I know, the person who took over after me never got those calls. My mom continued working there after I left, and she asked the new receptionist. I don't live anywhere close to that area anymore, and I've never been the object of obsession for a stalker that I know of. I still wonder who it was, and why they kept calling. She looks like a little Aryan. So, this happened to me when I was four or five, and well, five-year-olds don't have the best memory, but this really stuck with me. Not sure if this would go better in creepy encounters, but whatever. To start off, I was a cute child. Like, really cute. Long sandy blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. My dad decided to put me into modeling and I did a couple local ads in magazines, etc. Aside from being in local ads, just being a cute kid got my parents into more than a few confrontations with weirdos who went a bit too far with their compliments. This dude stuck with me though. One day, my mother took me out to breakfast to celebrate my birthday, and as we were sitting waiting for our breakfast, a man came up to us. I don't quite remember what he looked like, and I'm not gonna make something up, 
but he definitely made me uncomfortable even as a little kid who was overly friendly. He started talking to my mom, complimenting my outfit, and asking if I had any upcoming gigs. My mom was never in the mood for conversation with strangers. My dad was the show-off parent for sure, but she was polite, I remember. That was, until the guy got weird. Then he said something I didn't understand at the time. Wow, she really looks just like a little Aryan. That's when my mom was done and asked the man to leave. He didn't and proceeded to reach out and stroke my hair. I just sat there and stared at my mom in an uncomfortable stupor. My mom flipped her shit and stood up, grabbing me by the arm and pulling me out to the car. While she was putting her purse in the back and fixing my car seat, I was standing next to her looking back at the restaurant. The man from inside was standing out front, waving at me with a creepy ass grin on his face. I remember having nightmares about it for weeks, and my mom won't talk about it to this day. Not long after, she made my dad pull me from modeling. I'm kind of grateful for that though, now. So, creepy Nazi guy, let's not meet ever again. The Body Dump I have posted this on a couple of Ask Reddit threads that both died off with little interest. I thought I would post it here, seeing as it may be a better fit. Okay, so several years ago now, back in April of 2009, if I recall correctly, I had just gotten through winter quarter the first time I went to college and was taking some advantage of spring break. I, along with three friends, decided to get outdoors, as it was the first truly nice day of the year. So, I live in western Washington, and there is a stretch of road that hugs the edge of Bellingham Bay and Samish Bay, north of Puget Sound. It is called Chuckanut Drive, and it's a cool stretch of road to drive, as it hugs a cliff face for a while and overlooks the water. Along the way, there are a number of turnoffs to get a picture and other touristy stuff. Anyway, my friends and I drove up there and pulled into one such turnoff with the intention of hiking down to the water and enjoying some lunch, beer, and weed, and just enjoy the day. Now, the trail we took bottomed out next to a set of train tracks that hugged the coastline like the highway above it. This is a relevant detail here, as many transients and other assorted weirdos traveled its lengths quite often. In fact, we sat on some driftwood on the other side of the tracks next to the bay and watched several go by as we hung out. No one bothered us and we didn't bother them, but half of them were not completely dressed and things like blankets and even tarps were a common sight to see draped over them. We were there maybe an hour or so before realizing that the place was actually way more boring than we thought it would be, and decided to head out and find something else to do. So, as we are leaving, we spotted what looked like a far better path back up than the one we came down on, and chose it instead. 
and this is where our day took a bit of a turn. Not long after we started hiking up this new trail, we all saw what was obviously a blanket or something wrapped around something else. It was easy enough to see that it was covering something big and solid, but not as big as a full-grown human. But we instantly knew it was a body. To this day, I can clearly recall how I kept chanting in my head, Don't be a child. Don't be a child. Don't be a child. Etc. Walking up to it, we saw that it was not a dead kid, which I am grateful for to this day, but was sadly a dead dog. Its head was missing, having been cut clean off at some point just above the collar, which it was still wearing. There was absolutely no blood, and the blanket was still very clean as though it had just been pulled from the linen closet moments prior. There was no smell from the body either, so I guess it hadn't been there very long. Furthermore, branches and shrubbery had been cut or pulled free and set up in a way to attempt to hide the body from the tracks, which were maybe 10 to 15 feet away from our location. It was obviously a body dump. Someone had murdered this poor dog and dumped the body by the railroad tracks, and they had done it very recently. At this point, we looked at each other and decided to nope the fuck out of there and raced up the steep trail back to the road. We reached my buddy's blazer and burned rubber out of that place as quickly as we could. We later called the sheriff's office about this, but I think they just assumed that a stray dog got hit by a passing train when we mentioned that its head was missing. We never heard back from them about anything, so I have to assume they either didn't find it or didn't look. Regardless, I haven't gone down that stretch of road since. Too long, didn't read. Hiked down a cliff and found the dumped, headless remains of someone's pet dog. Hiked back out. 